Um, speaking of occupying, I had an opportunity to occupy the House of Representatives or at least one man's office today. I sat down and had a brief conversation with Oregon Representative Peter DeFazio, one of the one of the most progressive guys in the entire House of Representatives, member of the House Progressive Caucus, um, been around Congress for a long, long time, and he really knows what's going on there. Uh, here's the com- here's a piece of that conversation, Congressman Peter DeFazio. Um, great to have you with us. Tom, thank you thanks for, for us. having me back again. I remember back in the mid 2000s when the post office was doing just great. They were generating, as I recall, surpluses. They were talking about even converting large chunks of their fleet. They had the largest fleet of uh, cars in the United States to electric. Right. And being at the leading edge of all this stuff, you know, blowing out whole brand new technology. And then apparently in the middle of the Bush administration, somebody decided to put a stop to A, that, and B, the largest unionized employer in the United States, the post office. Tell us what happened. Well, it was really a dark of the night thing. Uh, There was a pretty non-controversial bill in the House for some postal reform, which was to extend new authority to them to partner with UPS and FedEx. Actually, UPS and FedEx are often dependent upon the post office to go the last mile. Their mm-hmm. routes to the post office that UPS, FedEx can't afford to do. So there's, there's a pretty good working relationship there. And uh, so we were extending that authority. This, at that point, they didn't have the authority to do that. And then the bill went over to the Senate, and uh, someone s- at some point snuck in a section in the Senate that no one quite understood at the time, but it talked about uh, retirement, uh, retirees' health insurance and prepayment. Mm-hmm. And the bill came back to the House, lame duck session of Congress, virtually Christmas Eve, I think it was actually two days before Christmas, voice vote, no one noticed this change the Senate had snuck in, and that's how it happened. It said, look, post office, unlike any other employer in America, unlike any other federal agency in America, unlike any government or entity anywhere in the world, you are going to have to prepay retiree health insurance for 75 years and you've got to accumulate that balance within 10. Meaning the post office is paying $5 billion a year into a fund for people who have not yet been born who might someday go to work for the post office and might get retiree health insurance if we haven't gone to national health insurance by then. And that's a $5 billion a year burden. They also overpaid their retirement uh, in a very complicated uh, conversion from the old CSRS, which was more expensive, to the new, much less expensive FERS. They overpaid by uh, between 40 and $60 billion for the conversion. And Treasury refuses to give the money back. Those two things alone would put them in the black for the foreseeable future, and then we need to move beyond that with other reforms. This is incredible. I would call this a poison pill. Is, it's is an it? intentional uh, attempt to dismantle the Forest Service. So I mean, for, the, the, the Postal, postal service. service. I sure. deal with the Forest Service. Yeah. Well, I do not so, <laughs> so, so what's being done about this? I know that, that yeah. you're, you're working really hard in the House of Representatives and some of your colleagues in the Senate as well to do something about this. Yeah, Bernie Sanders and I have uh, bills that are quite close to one another. I have 128 co-sponsors on mine, which is far and above any other pending bill out there that says, okay, you don't, you've prepaid enough. You know, you've prepaid more than anybody well, they else. They have billion, tens of billions of dollars right. already stashed. Right, right. Now. right. Um, that you will get a refund over 10 years on your overpayment uh, to, the, uh, you know, to the retirement fund. And you'll be given new authority to set your own rates. Right now, the Postal Service can't raise rates any more than the rate of inflation, CPI, on any class of mail. They only make money on one class of mail, which is first class. They're starting to make money now on some of the package mail. But, you know, all the junk mail, they don't make money, but they're not allowed to raise those rates uh, at all. Uh, You know, just the cost of, you know, cost of living index. Give them better authority to set their own rates to, you know, to really be a more independent institution. Congress tied their hands there. Allow them to get into new lines of business, develop new products, uh, you know, get out there and innovate. And remember, people think, oh, the post office, old-fashioned, sorry. They basically pioneered the use of the barcode. Everybody forgets that. Mm. You know, the Postal Service used to be an innovator, like you talked about. They wanted to help drive the technology toward cleaner delivery vehicles mm-hmm. uh, with either, you know, starting maybe propane and then in, into electric cars. And, and they were a really for now, But now we've been saddled with a bunch of Bush appointees who Obama has failed to remove uh, whose task, since they were appointed by Bush, has been to destroy the Postal Service, and they're still at it. Right. The, I mean, the guy who's the chair of the Board of Governors, 
Bush appointee, when asked what's the first class rate in a hearing two weeks ago, he had to go, staff, uh, what's the first class rate? What, I mean, this what is, is what's postage cost. Forty six cents, you know, know, forever oh, yeah. stamps, whatever. He but he know. has to, you know. I mean, he's got to ask. Wow. I mean, this is a guy who's trying to figure a way out of the morass. No, he's there to destroy the postal service. Amazing, amazing. So, uh, if people want to support your efforts. They go to howstefazio.gov. I'm assuming there's a link to. I, I know you've got a petition also right. over at the White House. Got a House petition site. at the White. We're trying Tell to get something out of the White House. Uh, the Obama people threw into his budget, moved to five day delivery. That's the death spiral for the Postal Service. Right. You dismantle it, go to five day delivery. That does away with their unfair competitive advantage because right. UPS and FedEx both charge extra for Saturday right. and the post office doesn't. Right. Pardon my yeah, interruption. Yeah, no. And look at the, just look at the disparities. I mean, when we got into this debate, I said to my staff, okay, I have this manila envelope. I want it to be in D.C by, you know, this, you know, one day, right. you know, look at the, look at the difference in rates. Look at, okay, I said over the weekend. I mean, you know, and business people by the hundreds in my district have contacted me saying I could not be in business if it wasn't for the United States Postal Service. Sure. I've got an online business. I'm gone if I have to pay UPS FedEx rates. I just can't do it. Right. So this is a small business issue. Uh, it's a seniors issue, prescription drug delivery. It's a veterans issue, prescription drug delivery. Uh, it's you know it, it's a rural issue for people in rural areas who you know who vitally need the service. And it's a day to day issue for most people. We have not yet gone totally you know wire you know to uh, wireless and e-communications. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is, that was my conversation with Congressman Peter DeFazio, and, or at least a piece of it. We'll, sh we'll share more of it with you later on today. We, we also discussed a couple of other topics, which I think you'll find of interest. But uh, DeFazio, he's, here's a guy, uh, the, uh, the other one was, was the chain CPI. He, he, is, he had a press conference today with Bernie Sanders, uh, who we will be hearing from tomorrow. And, uh, you know, Boy, these guys are on it, and they are really, really, really concerned about the president coming out and saying, yeah, let's cut Social Security and, you know, all that kind of stuff.